Then I'm going to sit down and talk to you about the plans. I've got an appointment for what's up fertility babe. Let's get these babies, ladies. Grand rising. How are you? I was just watching an IVF um, couple, Mindy and Mindy Minx. Her husband is older. Um, they just did IVF. They were using donor sperm. You know what? I'm going to link it. I'll let you guys find it. But they just did IVF with his sperm. They had to do like a testy thing because he had a... What do you call it? Vasectomy. Oh my God. <laughs> All right. I have um, rinsed out the conditioner that I had in overnight and I've done one round of shampoo. But you can see there's still blue in there. So um, I'm not going to go crazy with the shampoo because I'm more of a a pre-poo kind of girl i am gonna go in i've got some just some black castor oil that i'm gonna put on my hair um oh not this one this is actually eyelash serum there's another one i have um let me go find it yeah so i'm gonna leave that on for a minute oh my god i keep forgetting to do this and i keep reminding myself hi i'm tanika Thank you for clicking on Simply Tanika. If you are new here, welcome to the fam. If you are not new here, welcome back fam. I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers, so please like this video. It helps me out a lot, costs you nothing. Uh, and if you're really feeling your girl, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on that bell so you get those post notifications whenever I put up a new video. That way you'll catch the lives, you'll catch the premieres, you'll be in the loop, in the fam. You know what I'm saying? All right, I'm rambling. Let's get to this smoothie by Timmy. See you in the kitchen. All right, I tasted it and it is yummy. Oh my God. So let me just show you um, really quick what we got going on here. So I mixed in macadamia nut milk, the Timmy collagen, and then the Wyman's um, triple berry. I thought the berry would taste good since the Timmy collagen has a side berry in it. So, and I put in a little bit of um, protein, uh, the meal replacement protein. So it's really, really good. Mm. If you haven't seen my video on the benefits of collagen, I'll, um, I think it's on this side. I should memorize what side it's on. Wherever it is, I'll link it in the cards. So I'm trying to get as much collagen as possible. So I had the other collagen as a creamer in my coffee. I'm not gonna put this in my coffee because it has a berry flavor, but it does say on here you can mix it with other, in other beverages, like um, where mix one scoop into either hot or cold beverages for an extra collagen boost. You can also add it to water, coffee, tea, juice, smoothies, or in with your bank uh, baking. So I think later on I'm gonna add it to my hydrate drink. Um, so I'm not in a, let me not say it that way. I need to get back on the good foot as far as like um, health wise. Today is, it hasn't even been a week since I found out about my beta. I, ha I haven't been sleeping well. I haven't had a lot of water. Um, so I'm working on that today, which is why I wanted to come on and talk to you guys so I could be held accountable. But I need to get hydrated. I need to get back on a good sleeping pattern and I need to start exercising. So today my I, my goal is to get Food, because I also have had a little bit of a loss of appetite. So I thought this shake um, the, with the meal replacement and the collagen would be a good way to start. It's really good. Although I'm getting some seeds in my straw, but that's okay, it tastes good. Um, so yeah, and look at this little scooper in here. I'll show you guys. I thought this was cute. Like it has um, the rounded scooper. I don't know. You know, I'm trying to do all, all things around for feminine energy. So I like that. Um, yeah. So the idea is to hydrate. I did get water delivered. I have these left over here. So I'm going to get through at least two of these today, hopefully three, but at least two. And then I'm going to make myself go to bed, like wind down for bed at 10 o'clock tonight. I didn't go to bed until like two last night. So again, not going to judge myself, just going to move forward. After I have this, I'm going to have a little bit of yogurt and then I'm going to sit down and have to schedule some meetings and get some paperwork done. So it is a work day. I'm going to focus on that. But I did want to share with you that um, the teeny collagen, 
Justice has a great opinion of it too as well. Um, who knew? I have, I don't recommend feeding it to your dog. I'm just saying she seems to be also cheering it on. But thank you to Timmy for sponsoring this video. I appreciate you. If you are interested in getting your own um, collagen from Timmy, please use my discount code. I'll link it down below. It's Tanika20. You'll get 20% off. And they also sent me another one of these, which is cute. You also can make tea in here. I took the insert out for the tea just so I could drink this in here. I thought it was cute with the coloring. So yeah. Good stuff. I, it is marine based too, if anybody is interested in that. It doesn't taste like fish, which is what I wanted to taste first. It contains fish. It's wild caught marine collagen. So it's not farmed. You don't have to worry about any toxins in it. Sustainably sourced, premium select grade, exclusively fish scale. So it doesn't taste fishy. That's what I was worried about. My other collagen, I think, is bovine collagen. So if you don't eat beef, but you eat fish, if you're a pescatarian, this would be a good option for you. What was the... It's 46 calories. It's 10 grams of collagen. Peptides. It's got acai berry, butterfly pea tea powder, and stevia powder. Yeah, it tastes good. It does not have an aftertaste. And I mixed it with, like I said, the meal replacement. There's no aftertaste. It's pretty good. I should have strained it though because when I put the berries in, I think who has seeds? It must be the blackberries. Because I can feel that in the straw. It's I mean it's not the worst thing. It just tastes different when you're drinking it and not chewing it. You know what I mean? The texture. But the collagen tastes good. Um all right, so let me get to do what I got to do, fam. Let me get to doing something. I'll be back. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I'm gonna have to set up a light to talk to you guys tonight. It's getting darker and darker earlier and earlier. It's 4.49. Anyway, I'm done. Well, I'm done with the washing, rinsing, and et cetera of my hair. It's drying now. Um, most of it is tied up in here. I just want to get the excess water off before I sit under the dryer. Um, I've made my lunch. I know it's super late for lunch, but better late than never. This is what it is. It's one of the factor meals. It is creamy Parmesan chicken with uh, roasted broccoli and tomatoes. It's got 670 calories, total fat 49 grams, um, protein 41 grams. So we're in a good space there. There's no sugar. Oh, I lie. There's six grams of sugar. Must be the sauce, but that's okay. All right, so I'm going to eat that, then I'm going to finish at work. Hopefully I'll be done like 5.30. We're gonna do a premiere together at 5.45. Thank you in advance. And then I'm gonna sit down and talk to you about the plans. I've got an appointment for my hysteroscopy. I've got, we'll sit down and go through it all, but I'm excited about the next steps. I'm feeling better and that's motivating me to take, you know, steps, take steps to get it in gear and resume my healthiness. Um, and you know, I've mourned, I did need to mourn. So I'm not going to judge myself for doing that. I absolutely 1000% needed to mourn. <sighs> now I've got to dust myself off and, um, whew, bring everything back into focus. All right, let me eat. <laughs> Hi there. It's evening time. I don't know what time it is. Oh, uh, 7.55, almost 8. It's dark outside. It's dark before 8. Summer is really almost over. Anyway, my hair is in a semi-finished state. This is my natural fro. I sat under the bonnet um, so that it would be dry. Then I'm going to section it and straighten it. So I will probably stretch it first with the blow dryer just because that's less heat and put like a heat protectant on it um, so that I can cut it. It's getting pretty long though. See that? It's nice. So anyway, you'll see it next time you see me. As promised, I want to go over all of the stuff that's been happening um, <laughs> since I got my BF in. I sent a note um, straight away, well, Friday. I got the news on Thursday. I cried. Friday, I got my life together. Sent a news to um, the Braverman Institute saying, hey, the cycle didn't work out. I'm ready to get started. What do you need to happen? And of course, if you saw that the, um, if you could hear 
the uh, video where I talked to Dr. Thornton over at Braverman Institute. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put it over here. I just suggest you turn on the subtitle so that you can hear what he's talking about. But I needed to have the breakthrough bleed first, right? So I'd have cycle day one before I could start any testing. So that happened yesterday, September 1. Um, and so I am scheduled to go in for my testing tomorrow, which is, oh my God, do the math, the third. And then also on Friday, the fourth. So I'm tired guys, sorry. Yeah, so I'll go over what those tests are. I also have an appointment tomorrow with uh, one o'clock with Dr. McConnell. Oh, I'm blanking, it's these bright lights. With Dr. McConnell to go over like what my protocol is. Go, um, I'm going to actually send her an email of the blood test that we're going to have done so she knows what that is. I'm waiting on one more testing agency to call me. Apparently New York does not allow them to have these tests done here so I will have to go either to New Jersey or Connecticut which is similar. I don't know if you, if you all have been here but let me just give you background. In 2017, well 2018 when I finally moved from IUI to IVF. I had asked about doing an ERA and at that time it was not legal in New York so I would have had to go to either New York or New Jersey or Connecticut and so this it sounds like it's a similar thing I don't know what testing they're going to be doing hopefully it's not a biopsy but we'll see whatever it is I can't do it in the state of New York luckily um i'm not that far from the george washington bridge and so hopefully there's something close i looked on their website i can't see like what their locations are their official corporate headquarters are in massachusetts i know i'm not going to massachusetts so i don't know but um the nurse did the nurse from braverman did say it's you know it's um jersey or connecticut jersey's close so we'll see either way yeah jersey's just easier because i can take a car over there all right, so let me kind of get through what's going. I'm meeting with Dr. McConnell tomorrow at 1. I will record that so you guys can see it. Hopefully the audio is good. I'll work on that actually before. I know it can get tricky on this laptop sometime. I'm not sure really how to amplify it, but I'll see if I can like do, put the microphone closer to the laptop. I'll figure it out. When I recorded at work, I didn't have an external microphone. I was literally using my iPhone, and so it caught my voice better because I was right there which is what phones are designed to do, right? Like kind of drown out background noise so that if I'm talking on it, you hear me. Anyway, we'll be on the laptop and I'll be recording on the video camera. So hopefully that goes well. But um, we've already scheduled the hysteroscopy. It'll be 1 p.m. Or I'm sorry, my meeting is 1 p.m. with her tomorrow. It'll be next Wednesday, so Monday's Labor Day, not doing Tuesday, has to be done, um, or it's recommended to be done cycle day 6 through 12 after bleeding has stopped. So, I think if that is, what is Wednesday? Oh, I can't think, guys, sorry. The 7th is my brother's birthday, and that's distracting me. But today's the 2nd, whatever the day is, um, I'll put it down here. It's got to be like 6 or 7 for me, though, right? or eight, because cycle day one was on a Tuesday. So the next Tuesday would be seven days. Um, so eight days, it's either eight or nine. I'll put it down here. Anyway, Cheyenne's gonna be my person because I have to go under anesthesia. So there's the test and there's the extra $500 for the anesthesiologist for that doctor because they don't bill that to insurance, they bill it to the patients and then I can submit it for reimbursement, which hopefully I'll get reimbursed since I have no more out of pocket for my insurance. Hopefully that works out for me. Um, as a side note, I also took out a loan last Friday um, for, should I say, I don't know, um, for $20,000 to sort of figure out the rest of this journey and so that I'm not um, strapped. I don't wanna max out my cards because it affects your utilization on your um, credit report and I don't wanna tank my credit score. It impacts too many things. And so mainly like the interest rates on my current cards so I want to, yeah, so I just, I'm going to put that on cards to reduce my utilization and then pay what I can cash and then what I can't pay out of cash, then I'll tap into those cards, but my utilization won't be too high, if that makes sense. 
so um whatever the hysteroscopy whatever the insurance doesn't cover i'll have to pay for it. i'm thinking it should cover it 100 again because i have no more out of pocket but the insurance is tricky i may have to fight with them 500 dollars for the anesthesiologist that happens next wednesday i don't know how much i'm going to be charged for the lab work for tomorrow um or thursday but i'll have to pay that directly it's lab core which is out of network for my insurance it's quest that's in network so i'll have to pay that out of pocket i'll submit that for reimbursement um um, through the insurance and it'll be the out of network cost that they'll cover if that makes sense like if it was in network I wouldn't be paying anything you get what I'm saying right so I have those um, lab and I'll go over it's a lot a lot a lot of tests and the reason why it's over two days one day is non fasting the other day is fasting so nothing by mouth after midnight so tomorrow it's in the afternoon and it's non-fasting so and the nurse at Braverman or actually not even at Braverman there's another nurse sorry the people who are doing the test let me slow down and go back let me give you what the nurse from Braverman I'm gonna go over her email sorry guys I'm all over the place <sighs> deep breath so um, Darlene is her name I think she's a nurse or a care coordinator. I don't know that it matters. Anyway, she sent me this note on Monday. Hi, after, you know, Tanika, after reviewing your history, Dr. Thornton is recommending a risk assessment analysis. And he has all my medical records. Those were sent to him before my virtual consultation with him. So he has those records. He has the second opinion records. He has like all my test results. Um, he also recommended another hysteroscopy when I met with him back in August. And so he has all that so based on that he's recommending a risk assessment analysis which is what he talked about in the video he didn't call it that but he did say there would be a lot of blood work and it would take six weeks so that's where we are um the risk assess assessment analysis is a report that is created by pregmune p-r-e-g-m-u-n-e -E. there's a bug on that light sorry guys Pregmune. It's a reporting company that provides a proprietary comprehensive testing and AI powered analysis that will assess your risk for failure and provide us the clinical results necessary to generate your protocol for your fertility cycle. So he will work hand in hand with Dr. McConnell on what the protocol is. He also mentioned on that video call, if it is deemed if it's determined that I do need Medrol or some other um, corticosteroid, they would start it on cycle day three when the S trace is started, not um, the day that the progesterone is started. So that would be a difference already. But of course, we have to wait for the test results to see even if it's warranted. So I contacted, it says contact the care coordinator at Pregmune, which I did, and they'll organize the testing for me. So what... Braverman is charging me is $3,000. They're saying there's a $1,000 discount for a limited time. I am going to call after I get my blood work done and see if I can still get the discount because I don't get the results back for six weeks and who knows if there's a discount in six weeks. You know what I mean? So I'd rather just pay it now. Although I'm usually not a fan of that because then they have my money interest free. But if it saves me $1,000, it's definitely not gonna accrue a thousand dollars in interest in the bank during that time right the two thousand dollars so they might as well just have it so once the testing is completed i will need to be financially clear to schedule my immune management review consultation so after the testing is done i have to be financially cleared and it says completed but not results back so that's what i'm banking on is like after the actual testing part is done we'll see it may be semantics <laughs> trying to save a thousand dollars when we when we receive the results of your risk assessment testing bri will create a unique protocol based on this report and we will then be able to carefully manage your fertility cycle my first appointment as an immune management patient will be a telemed zoom so that means that obviously that first one it was a consultation it was i wasn't a patient yet this one will be my first meeting as a patient after he has my test results generated by the test that he's requesting um, and then, so that consultation will be with the head of our immuno immunological practice, Dr. Melvin Thornton. He'll then provide you with the unique and personalized treatment plan with the necessary protocols. He will also share with you how we will continue to provide the highest standard of care and support you, uh, and support 
throughout your management with BRI. And so the thing with BRI is after this treatment protocol, you're also required to sign up for their pregnancy protocol, which is another $3,000 pregnancy management. If this first time doesn't work, we start all over again, except that each subsequent time, it's only $1,000 instead of the $3,000. And so, but the pregnancy management is mandatory for, they want to manage, um, they want to be a part of my team, of <laughs> my pregnancy team, for the first trimester. Does that make sense? So, that was what I got Monday. Then I contacted Pregmune and got started. So that is another $2,000 with Pregmune, right? So it's 2,000 over here, 2,000 over, or it's 3,000, I'm trying to get it down to 2,000 for Braverman. Then we go to Pregmune, that's another $2,000. So they are also having a special um, for the first 100 patients. It, originally it said first 30 and then it said first 100 for this whatever, I guess that are referred, but I'm not sure how they're getting the 100, 100 of first 100 patients to do what who knows anyway they're offering a discount where it would be a thousand dollars which i already paid them that after i paid them that money they sent me these tests via email i knew it was coming from when i talked to the woman on tuesday or monday whatever so i had already scheduled my lab core appointments even though i didn't have the recs yet because i just wanted to get on the calendar because i'm me i'm team too much so it's raining outside hopefully you guys can hear me i do have the mic on but i'm sure you hear the raining in the background oh my god and the girls they're getting used to the rain now i will have to like when i was under the bonnet earlier first they like to snuggle with me they were snuggled under me and then i turned the dryer on and they were like uh uh and they ran in the room they're funny anyway they're not freaking out with the rain so i'm appreciate i appreciate you good girl justice good girl liberty okay so then tomorrow the test that i'm taking as a result of the Pregmune analysis, the first one is my non-fasting test. And that appointment is, I believe it's at 2.30. So I'll meet with Dr. McConnell. Our appointment is scheduled from 1 to 2, but I think it's going to only be 30 minutes. I have my questions. I know what I want to go over. And yeah, I don't, I don't think it'll take an hour. Either way, the testing facility is like on the other side of the park where I walk the girl. So it, Google Maps says 15 minutes. So either way, I'll be fine. Non-fasting, there's so many on here, but I'll go through some of them that I think you guys will, that'll resonate with you guys. Um, if you're ever going to see a fertility doctor, some of these you may have already had tested. Like I see vitamin D on here. That's been tested. We're going to test it again. I just had it tested last month because I should actually send him that. I'm going to make a note because I went to the regular endocrinologist about my parathyroid. So anyway, let me just make a note. Vitamin D results to Dr. Corn. Okay. My old um, GP or my prior GP was um, Dr. Karen Thornton. I should ask if they're related, but now I see Dr. Kapoor. I didn't go back to Dr. Karen after um, COVID because, yeah, anyway, she's a nice lady. Here are some of the tests. TSH, we know that's like a, a normal thing, right? The thyroid. CBC with differential panel, so the complete blood um, panel. Rheumatoid arthritis factor. Vitamin D, I said that. Factor V, L E I D E N, mutation. Never heard of it. Going to look it up. Thyroxine, immunoglobin, G, A, and M, folate serum. And again, these are all non-fasting. I'm saying that because in parentheses behind it, it keeps reminding me. Um, can you see that? There we go. That it's all non-fasting. MTHFR, thyrotropin, homocysteine, chromosome blood routine, lupus anticoagulant composition, um, antiphosphatidylserine, say that three times fast um anti anti-cardio lip beta 2 glycoprotein pai1 gene polymorphism anti marillion hormone my amh i don't know why we're testing that since we're not doing it with my own eggs but maybe there's some other immunolo immunological reason that i'm not getting pregnant and i can try again with my own eggs i don't know don't let's let's not open up that box leave 
Pandora's box over there. CCP Antibodies ANA Comprehensive Panel HLA DQA1, HLA DQB1. So there's quite a few on there. And these are all, my insurance has paid for these before, but again, it's a different lab. So that's why I feel like I'll be able to submit it and it'll just be out of network. And so, yeah, that's what I'm taking tomorrow. And then it says, um, these are the instructions from Pregman. You've been provided with two requisitions for blood work at LabCorp. A fasting requisition identified by the code FAST within the set right under the guarantor box. And then a non-fasting requisition being the one without any FAST. So I started with the non-FAST because that just seems easier and I won't pass out. Uh, <laughs> because I feel like there's gonna be a lot of vials of blood. Like I said, when I go to the nephrologist, they do between eight and 12 vials. I always take snacks to have right after, so I will probably do that for my fasting one. But I was told to eat a big meal before um, this by the nurse at Pregmune. So I will eat, I'll be good about my food tomorrow. I'll eat a good breakfast, I'll eat a good lunch. I'll have that by one so that it's done before my meeting with Dr. McConnell and I'm not rushing. And then my body is digesting that. And I might take a protein shake and drink it on the way over just so my body is like full. Friday morning, um, I'm going in for the fasting blood work. And again, that means nothing by mouth after midnight. I think I can have water, but I'll clarify. Um, so this one, the list is not as long, thank God. So maybe it's only two vials. Um, it'll depend. I should call my sister because she's, uh, what is it called? A phlebotomist. So she'll know. It depends on if it has to go in separate vials. Like some of them, the way the test is processed, it has to be in a certain agent. So that'll determine, but I'll ask my sister so I can get mentally prepared. And Cheyenne's boyfriend is also a phlebotomist. So I'll ask one of them. Anyway, hemoglobin A1C, fasting, insulin, fasting, PT and PTT, no idea, fasting. I'll look it up. I'll know before I go. Um, 17 OH progesterone LCMS, testosterone free and total. This used to come back high for me when I was doing DHEA. I'm not doing that, so I'm not really worried about it. Glucose plasma, they're going to do a separate test for DHEA sulfate. Um, fatty acid profile, essential. Sex hormone binding globulin, I think is, it's GLOB, but I'm, I'm assuming they've shortened globulin. Serum, fasting, and then leptin, leptin serum, fasting. So those are the ones I hope to take. There's a third test that I have to do, but it's from a different agency. Where's Darlene's email? Um, oh no. Sorry, I'm mixing them up. It's the agency that's in New Jersey or Connecticut. So I have to do that test. I have not heard from them. So I will call them again in the morning to see if I can get that scheduled. I'm assuming that's another out-of-pocket cost. I don't know what that cost is yet. Hopefully it's no more than $1,000, but you know, whatever. In for a penny, in for a pound at this point. So tomorrow my meeting with Dr. McConnell is in preparation to discuss what's going to happen. I want to tell her to expect that it will take six weeks. I want to give her these copies of these. I'll send those in the morning just so she has them like prior to our conversation. And then I want to talk to her about what it really, what are the real risks if I thaw and re-biopsy my embryos. And I preface it that way because the second opinion doctor never referenced that they were already biopsied. So I don't think they shared that part of the file with her. Dr. McConnell knows they were already, they were biopsied and they were exceed. So they've been manipulated twice. Now we're talking about potentially thawing them, biopsying them again, right? And it's only taking a few cells, but there are only so many cells to start out with anyway. So what is then the viability of that ever potentially being a child? Even because it doesn't make sense if you test it and it comes back normal, but you kill the embryo in the process of the testing. Do you know what I mean? So I am leaning highly away from testing, but I just want to understand for myself, what are the risks? What are the benefits? Do we see any potential benefits? Because she and I had this conversation before we ever had the retrieval and decided that it was best for me not to have them tested um, because of the age of the donors. And also because there's no studies to show that testing 
donor egg, donor sperm conceived embryos improves pregnancy outcomes because both of these people don't have fertility issues, right? Most studies are done on when one or both partners have a fertility issue and then that merits testing. Um, there, there just is, there aren't any studies on. It. I mean, there should be. They probably should do that, I guess. But if you're going to do that, you, I would think, want to pay for it for the couple. But it doesn't work that way. So most of these studies, just so you guys know, are retrospective, which means the couples go through cycles or singles go through the cycles, and then their data is looked at after it's happened. So retro, right? Retrospective. So it's a look back for most of them, and they'll tell you if you're like into reading studies like I am, it'll tell you if it's a retrospective or an active. There are active studies where they solicit you to be a part of them. Like there was one, I was in one study at Columbia and I got like a gift certificate for, I should find that. I got a gift card for a hundred bucks because of my age. Like if you're over a certain age, you get a hundred bucks. If you were younger, you get 50 bucks. I guess they're really trying to encourage old people to test. I don't know. I didn't really need the money obviously because I haven't, I don't even know where the gift card is, but I'm going to write that down too and find it now that, um, pennies count. So a hundred dollar gift card. Where are you? There's also a pile of unopened mail that I need to go through because I'm sure I have residual checks that I need to deposit. So yeah, that's a whole other thing. Um, I just have to stop spending so much money and then I have to allocate for how money is coming in. So you'll see more partnerships on here, which I'm grateful for. I'm only partnering with companies that I believe in. Like I'm not out here peddling my wares. Um, I renewed my partnership with Teamy. I've partnered with them before. Um, last year was the first time I did it when I was in California and I actually genuinely love their products I was looking today didn't realize like how many teamy products I actually had so yeah it's a company that I believe in there's some other things um, coming up too. like there's some ovulation tests that because I, I do want to track my ovulation this cycle just to make sure it's happening um, because timing is going to be everything right we already we have like an extended period to wait the six weeks so that already puts me in mid-october early November so I'd only really get in one more transfer this year because, well, depending on how it falls, because the lab at Columbia closes for the last two weeks of the year. So I say all that to say, because we already have that extended time, I need to make sure that I'm ovulating. Or if I'm not, that we have a protocol to get me to ovulate. I was before all the meds. I don't have a reason to believe that I won't, but I, that's why I also want to do the detox just to make sure I flush everything out of my system. And I'm going to do some myo inositol to help support ovulation and just help support my body get back on track. Cause it might be a little confused. Think of it of like, um, when women go on birth control, cause that's essentially what's happened in my body. We've suppressed the ovulation. And so it, you're, body just needs a little bit of time to reset. So I want to do everything I can to support it. So I'll be taking the my, my, oh, I inositol. I'll be tracking ovulation. Um, sorry, my brain is all over the place. There's so much going on in there right now. Um, let me get back to Dr. McConnell. So that meeting with her, I want to understand what the risks are and meaning what is, does this laboratory have experience with rebiopsying first and foremost? Um, what is the data on rebiopsying? Like, what is it, what are the chances that the embryo is not going to make it either through A, the biopsy or B, I should do one and two, or B, the uh, rethaw, re and of course they can't give me an exact number, but they can give me what the risk ratio is, right? And given all of that, do the benefits outweigh those risks? That's what I need to understand. Because if I'm going to end up with zero embryos, it's not worth it. Do you know what I mean? It's not worth it. And I know that cost is going to be $4,000 to test them because I did send a note to Nicole over there. So I am just so, I, I want to talk to her. I'm not a fan of the testing. I just feel like there is a high potential for error. And I never asked her about the mosaic. So I'm going to add that to the list too. Like will Columbia transfer mosaics if any of them end up being mosaics? I'm just gonna, it's, I'll keep an open mind, but right now, based on everything that I know, it's a last resort. However, I want to have the conversation with her, see what she feels about it. If, if the data is compelling enough or if the benefits are great enough, obviously I'll explore it. I'm trying to 
sort this out and now would be the time to do it while we're also testing me and waiting on the results back from my test honestly i don't deep down i'm just gonna be honest i hope that there is something in these tests that shows what's that there's something going on within me that is why they're not implanting but that does make me a little sad because I wish we would have figured that part out when we when I was doing my own eggs. You know what I mean? But I, I wasn't yielding enough to really keep exploring that and that would have been very expensive. So imagine, I just did four back-to-back -back cycles. Imagine if I would have tried to do that with my own eggs. I would have had to do, first of all, I wouldn't have been able to do four that quickly because I was only getting one egg at a time. So I would have had to do another retrieval. <laughs>